know if you can make a mark just up there a boatload of paragliders or hang gliders paragliders the one with the parachute paragliders in it parachute paragliders that's the one oh we're in the yorkshire dales on an absolutely beautiful day as you can see and we're in the uh, area that's known as Lek, Lek Fell and that bit up there where them paragliders are is Gra Gareth one at Dales 30 and we're going to be going right at top of that valley that bit there is Crag Hill just a little bit right corner is Great Coombe now that's a Dales 30 as well and that's where we're going to be camping but I'm just telling the idea of which route to go whether to do it clockwise or anti-clockwise once we get up onto Gra Gareth it's a steady walk along or about three miles to Great Coombe but I need to collect water now there is a spring on map indicated up there so whether I trust that or not but if I get right to Edit Valley up to Great Coombe I can just drop down into it a little bit into the valley and collect water there or do I go across here and a steady walk up that way and we actually cross a stream or a river in bottom and uh, I think there's a waterfall as well indicated on the map and then it's a steady climb up of a crag hill up to Great Coombe so once we get up here I'm gonna mull it over in my head and make a decision a bit further up so let's get going. So I did make my decision and we are going up Crag Hill. I'm going to drop down into here for some water as you can see if I'd have carried on along top of here there's a I think it's like a shooter's trap that leads to a shooter's cabin it's marked up map there's a shooter's cabin at the end of that track but then that looks as though it goes no further so what I've done dropped off a hillside from the other side of that wall like I've just said it goes further on there's a gate that can come through here and there is a little bit of a path down this hillside down into the bottom we'll collect his water there Apparently there's a little bit of a waterfall down there that's marked on map as I've said earlier and then there's a path off up the other side of here and then a nice steady climb up to Crag Hill and then Great Coombe is right at the top of the valley up there, uh, right at the top end up there that's where we're going to be camping tonight up there and then tomorrow morning we'll come back down over here bag Gra Gareth the other Dales City so that's Another two days 30 on this trip. Right then. <laughs> this is Ease Gill. And this runs all the way right up into the uh, top of the valley there. Where like, you know, like in tops of valleys, you've got fingers of saucers and they all mingle the way down the valley. All into one gill, which this is what it is. And as you can see, it is bone dry. Oh, when I say bone dry, there are some pools, but I can hear some running here somewhere and just down here. So this, I need to get water here anyway. So I'll uh, I'll come back to you in a minute. In a minute, when I find something that's running. I tell I, I tell you what, look how cool this is. Yours obviously. In wetter time, we haven't had no rain for quite a while, obviously, this is why it's uh, quite dry, this but Just look at our... Obviously, this is limestone as well. Just look at how that's been cut. See under the bridge there? Where it waters pool and cut into soft limestone. Same, same just up here as well. <coughs> obviously, that's the, the stream bed, isn't it? But... Looks as though there's a source here just running, it's just trickling a little, trickling a little bit, and it's clear as well. So 
I'm just going to have, I can hear something down there as well, I'm just going to have a little, I'm going to take my bag off here, have a little walk under that bridge and see if there's all better running just down there, but if not, looks like there's a spring just there which I can get my water from, thankfully. So yeah, just going to have a quick look under here. Ah, that's uh, worked out quite well there. Got me saying three litre, two litre there, and a litre in B3. That uh, wheat being warm today, well, 23 degrees it's uh, forecast today, and that's what it was down at car. Temperatures tonight are on a duty drop down to like eight, nine degrees, so it's going to be quite warm. So, important to keep some fluid on board. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm relieved I got some water there because as I came down off of there and I saw this was bone dry, I had, I had a little bit of a fear thinking, damn, where am I going to get my water from? Like I was saying, on, on, on map, there's a waterfall indicated. If you just go down creek here, or creek, brook, whatever you want to call it, there is a right drop off just at the back of there. So when this is flowing well, it does look as though there's a, a nice waterfall just over there. But it, it, was, it was running just nice just over a, a little step there, just under the bridge that I saw, so that's where I've got my water from. So yeah, let's, uh, I'll get that in my pack, get bag back on back now, across bridge, and then path goes off up here, nice steady climb, then up onto Crag Hill. Right, uh, well we've made it to the path now, and we're literally we follow this fence line it's route on the map this fence line is indicated on map there's little dots which shows that it's a fence line and the route follows this up and this particular spot just here is called Little Argyle Head or Little Argyle Head and there is actually I don't know if you can hear that there's running water in here but it's quite peaty uh, the water I've collected down here is clear water so if I hadn't got water down there this would have been an option but like I say it is uh, it is quite peaty you can just about hear it running in there so that is an option anybody coming up this way you can't get water down at that uh, where that waterfall is on map Little Argyll Ed can get water in fact there's a spring coming straight out at ground here look that's what's feeding it because it don't go any further there's a spring feeding it there and it looks like clear water that so, yeah little Argyll Ed or Argyll Ed running water So as I'm walking up this hillside and I've seen quite a few of these these are owl pellets and you can just see a piece of bone there sticking out that little white bit so what an owl does is once they've caught the prey be it a, a mouse, a vole or whatever once their digestive system has taken out goodness out of that they regurgitate a pellet which is what that is a pellet is the fur bones, teeth, all the stuff that's no good to them, so they regurgitate that up and spit it out like that and I've brought them apart if were quite clean you know it's not like I'm uh, touching shit or out like that so you can actually break an owl pellet apart you can see all tiny bones and teeth and jaw bones it's 
quite interesting so a bit look on it like I say I've seen quite a few knocking about there's quite a lot of owls knocking about around this area what species I'm not quite sure uh, I'm not going to have a guess but yeah it'd be nice to see uh, an owl or two knocking about This pile of stones here is called Richard Man. It's just it's just marked on map Richard Man pile of stones. And just perched on top of it is a skylark. Oh, it's just flown off here now. Look, yeah, little skylark perched just on top rock here. But yeah, that uh, this little pile of rocks is known as Richard Man. No idea why. If I can find out a bit of information on why it got its name, I'll pop it a bit on screen, a bit of information on screen, if I can find some. So we're not actually far from top now. Just keep plodding. Another 10 or 15 minutes maybe, and we took some at Crag Hill. Crag Hill, 682 metres. We've got some cracking views from uh, up here. I don't know if you'll make it out, but we've got Penigent over there. Clover Hill over on the left hand side. The Great Wern side, Ingleborough. Three Yorkshire, three peaks on that side there. This one here is Calf Top. See so right over into Lake District and all from there. As always, you can always make Great Gable out, that big lump stuck up. Yeah, absolutely fantastic up here. So, right then, we're, we're going to carry on to Great Combe because Crag Hill hit the actual Dale 30. Great Combe is Great Combe's about 689 or 88 metres or something like that. So, it's just a few metres higher than uh, Crag Hill. So we'll keep going, follow up wall along, get to Great Combe. So there is a small cairn just here. I'm just going to touch it just in case, but showing not map that the actual summit, 687 it is, not 688 or 89, 687 is just off the side of this wall over here. And that's what's indicated has been the summit on the map so we'll head over there so then according to the map this is the highest point on Great Combe 687 metres not 688 or 89 like I was saying back over there 687 so that is that officially bagged, but I've got a feeling that that other cairn over there might be the official summit. I'm not 100% sure. I'd have to have a look at some official information on that. But we've touched both cairns. That is Great Coon bagged, another Dale's 30 in the bag. So I'm going to go and try and find myself a nice little spot to pitch now. Although I'll not be pitching just yet, because it is only just half past seven. But I won't mind being over that side somewhere with that view. The pen again straight out of my tent door. Uh, wind's coming this way as well. The uh, forecast wind we're only for up to 20 mile an hour gusts and so a 10 12 mile an hour, but it's not even that. And it was forecast to drop, uh, drop off through neat as well. So wind ain't going to be a problem. So, have a little look about and fetch you back 
and I've actually found somewhere where I can pitch my tent. Hopefully, like I say, we have a view of that. So I've pushed on a little bit down past Great Coombe, which is just back up there. That's Crag Hill where we've been. I've just come down to score this bit out, looking up map. There's an area here, uh, they sort of contour lines even out here, so as you can see we've got a, a flat bit of land here and there's some cairns indicated on map which you can see here. But trouble is here, there's a there's a lot of sheep about and there's a lot of sheep shite about, so I don't know, it's uh, it's still only quite to eight, I've still got, sunset's not well about half past nine now, so I've still got well over, what, an hour, an hour and a half, three quarters or something. Well, that next hill you can see over there, that's Gragareff over there, and this one here is called Green Hill. I might push on to there. It's only going to take me, well, less than half an hour, 20, 15, 20 minutes. So I'm going to go along on to there, see what that's like, and uh, I might even end up on Gragareff yet. So we'll, uh, we'll keep pushing, like I say, loads of time, no rush, steady away, I'll get onto Green Hill, see what it looks like on there, and uh, what, I, what I'm after is, I mean sunset's going to set off at back of uh, Crag Hill here anyway, so, but if we're a bit more further over there, we might be able to sort of see a direct line to sunset going out over, over to Hawks Lake District, like in West, whereas here, Crag Hill and this wall is blocking view but then I also still want to get that view of Penny Gentard at uh, Dewey so right, I'll, once we get to the top of Green Hill I'll fetch you back up there and we'll see what crack is so this is Green Hill area, 628 metres Ice Point is just back on that little brow there, 628 metres and it, don't get me wrong, it is nice and flat, but it's just a little bit too open for me. Either side at wall, you know, I've, I've been walking on that side at wall. Come over to this side, there's a little bit better path along this side. So, as I thought I might end up doing, I'm going to walk along to Gargareth. And I will be pitching on there somewhere. I don't know. A few folk that have pitched on there, so I do know that there is at least somewhere to camp on there. So we'll crack on and get up there. Like I was saying back there, we've still loads of time, plenty of time before the sunset. And at least, like I was saying, from Gar from Gra Gareth, as you can see over that way, we should get a nice sunset going over. And to west of it at late, so hopefully, with this bit of cloud that we've got in sky here now, we might get some good colour. Our fingers crossed. Alright then, Gra Gareth summit 627 metres, and we've got a good view of where we come from. So we literally parked down in valley here yeah. we've come up, walked made up to Crag Hill just on there walked around to Great Coombe that's Green Hill and then to Gragareff I think we've walked about eight and a half mile there some, somewhere in that region I've walked that a lot quicker than what I expected to but I did expect camping up there which uh, has not come to fruition so I am camping up here tonight so I need to find a bit of a spot somewhere I might uh, I mean it does look good on here like but just on here it's nice short grass flat reasonably uh, reasonable ground but it is a little bit exposed so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna have a little walk over here just over the other side at wall and see if there's out just Opposite side at wall there we a view of Penny Gent like and uh, Wernside in Gulbra. Uh But if I can't see too much over this side I might just come back over here I don't know yet 
was looking at that sunset there. I don't know whether I've just said it's uh, it's only just gone half past eight, so we've still another hour before that sun sets. There's a there's a bit of low lying cloud over at uh, west over the Etit Lakes. So that sunset might fizzle out, it might not, we might get some nice colour up in clouds, but yeah, that's an hour away, so I'm just gonna nip over here, see if there's any favourable spots over, over that side. If not, I'll come back here. <laughs> Right then, we've pitched up, it's just about half past nine and as you can see the sun is just about to set Well it has done over the back of them clouds and as you can see there's some lovely colour You cast up into that cloud now, it's lovely that But yeah, as I was saying earlier, I came over here and had a quick look over the other side of this wall But though, no one out taking me fancy Went back up to the trig, I just, I just didn't fancy camping up near that trig so to the convergence of about a for us and past that from all different directions I sort of wanted to be a little bit away from it so came over here there's a few little lumps and bumps here got pitched just here just nice and a little bit more out it way I feel a little bit better about this here so yeah all pitched up got my map blown up I've got my bag in there lofting and everything changed out of my sweaty gear got my top on there drying off I'm going to take this uh, rest of this sunset in now and get a drink on go. Right, well, it's uh, 20 past 10 now and I'm only just getting my tea. Got a, uh, a little drink on go. So cheers. And once I've had this tea, I don't think I'll be doing much else other than uh, getting my head down. So like I've said before, it's I do like summer camping, but you know, like when sunsets at half past nine and yeah, you and you're taking pictures, you're setting your camp up and everything. Sun sunset at half past nine, quarter to ten, ten o'clock or whatever. And before you know it, you've had no tea. You're ready for bed. So sometimes is it, is it actually worth getting something to eat but I'm absolutely starving so I am going to get this finish my drink off catch up with my socials a little bit and I might fetch her back a little bit later on before I get me head down and get to sleep so other than that if I don't fetch you back, I'll catch you in the morning. Right then, it is about 11 o'clock. So I got my tea, finished the rest of that drink off. And I've had a, a couple of Kipling cakes which I chucked in, which I've devoured. So I've just got out to take a leak. Got back in here, got into a bag. So I'm nice and snug and warm in here now. Just need to take my down vest off and... I'll be getting my head down, so I shall catch you in the morning. Well, good morning. The time is 5.42, but I've been up about an hour. Because the sunrise was about 5 to 5. So I set my alarm for 20 to, I think, or quarter to 5. I got up and we've had an absolute stunner of a sunrise looking over that way uh, there's some absolutely beautiful colour in the sky on that we've had there's been no round here but looking that way over to over to east where the sun's risen bought a load of inversions in valleys over that way like so thought I might have had some over here but not to be so yeah got a few pictures Took a leak as you do in the morning. I've got back in here because it is surprisingly chilly out here this morning. It's quite a bit of condensation on the underside at uh, tarp. It was quite breezy during the night, and our wing got up quite a bit. Well, obviously, I don't know what to, but it was shaking tarp about a little bit, but it's calmed right down again this morning, so that's what I'm saying. I'm surprised there's as much wet under here as these. So uh, like I said, got back in here 
I've just spark kettle up and uh, brew time. That's what looks like that coffee. We get a bit of breakfast, we take a bit of scenery in, and uh, we'll probably be getting off quite early this morning. So I've got a ballack in in one of the comments on one of my previous videos. So I boiled kettle, put hot water, boiling kettle straight onto the coffee bag. So somebody kindly pointed out that you're not supposed to pour the boiling water straight onto your coffee. You're supposed to leave it a few minutes. And apparently it tastes much better. So can't remember who it was, but that boiled about two or three minutes ago. So I'll just pour that there and that and we will see. I'll give that another couple of minutes to uh, infuse and we'll see if it tastes any better. I mean it's a great tasting coffee anyway but we'll see if it does make a difference. Here we go, the big moment. Is it any different by not pouring the boiling water straight on your coffee? There is some at there. Can taste a little uh, fresh coffee. Can have a bit of a bitter taste to it, but I do quite like that. But by not pouring boiling water straight on that, the I'm not I'm not getting the bitter taste in that. maybe a little bit smoother or am I just overthinking <laughs> anyway I'm gonna enjoy it no matter what so I've just made me send another brew and all that cools a little bit it's half past six now so all that cools a bit and once I've had that I will be packing up, getting me sent out of this nice cosy sleeping bag and packing up and getting off but just going to have a little chat about some plans that I've got coming up in the uh, not too distant future so 5th of June me and Paul are going to be doing Cumbria away we're going to be doing it over five days a couple of wild camps couple of campsite camps I think and the day we pass through Keswick we might actually stop in the uh, YHA with the comfort for one at needs. I'm back up here in a few days with Paul actually up in Yorkshire Dales for a camp uh, and, and, and with Chris as well, Chris JB so there's me, Paul and Chris we're all meeting up and coming up for a camp so that'll be interesting so yeah me and Paul will be having a chat and getting a few plans in place confirming a few things here and there so looking forward to that so as you might have seen in recent videos I've been getting a few miles in and lightening a few bits of kit up I've been a bit of a convert to the uh, trail show in recent times so that's uh, I've been quite impressed with them usually a sturdy boot man but uh, yeah they've made quite a difference so yeah I've been trying to lighten, in a, like lightning, lighten a few bits of kit up uh, like for instance I mean uh, you might think that you probably think you've seen this bag of four but I've, I've got the Mythic 600 this is my Mythic 400 which I've not long since purchased uh, this is good down to something like comfort of minus one limit of minus six so this will be a, a good pre-season bag only weighs 600 grams 
I've got another shell to come in and another pack coming hopefully Dexter Atom packs is hopefully going to get me a Atom plus 35 litre that hopefully fingers crossed because they are actually quite run off the feet at the minute then they've actually put the lead time on all packs to 12 week which is crazy so I've been talking to Dexter in uh, over recent weeks and they're uh, they're extremely busy so that's the reason why they've had to put lead time on all packs to 12 week so yeah that's some future plans coming up quite quite soon after I've done that of it somewhere I'll probably get quite a few other sort of lengthy walks done there were one I wanted to get done I might have mentioned it before there's one up here in Yorkshire Dales called Elliot Way that's a 50 miler or 50 55 mile or something like that I'll probably do that over three days have a nice steady one and take the time and enjoy it but yeah there'll probably be another one or two as well thrown in there somewhere but yeah that's uh, some future plans coming up on channel as well as getting a few other wild camps in here and there of it summer so I, I'm going to shut up Gavin on get me coffee once I've had this get out of the bag start packing up and we'll get off back down to the car Right then, it's, uh, it's dropped quite cold up here this morning in this wind, that breeze has got up again, it's quite chilly, I've, uh, obviously because I've packed up, I'm, I'm literally all packed up now and all I've got to do is drop cricket shelter, here to, I was hoping it was going to be that summer going to sort of dry it out but still quite wet up inside of here so yeah I just need to time it shoes up, put my gaiters on, dry this, drop that, stuff it in the bag and we'll get off. And, uh, as I was saying it's, it's got quite chilly, I've put my uh, windshell on and it's looking quite cloudy now. Over back here looking over to Ingleborough over there that's got a cap of cloud on it, Wernside's got all cloud on it. It's, uh, it's coming over quite overcast, it's looking quite dark over there actually. There's no rain forecast, so like I say, it's literally, I bet we're no more than half an hour away from the car because of how I uh, carried on walking round to here last night, where that it worked out. I knew it was only going to be a short walk back down to the car this morning, so that's why I've hung, a, I've hung about a little bit. It's, uh, it's half past seven now, so. Right, bless it, Gavin, get this dried off. We'll uh, drop it, get off back down. Alright then, we're all packed up, bag on back, ready for off. That's where I was, you know the score, we'll leave no stress as always. And as I was saying, looking over this way, over that single breaking seat cloud over there, same where we're inside. Um, what's that one? Oh, that's where we. <laughs> I'm saying what's that over there, that's where we were used to do. that's Craggle and Great Coombe so looking at that lot over there I'm glad we didn't camp on that, that's where they've been in Crag up there so looked at uh, well this but looking over to the west it's quite clear so I uh, because uh, like I said because of the nature of how this route worked out I say it's literally 20 minutes half an hour back down to the car so what I'm going to do I'll wrap it up here there's no point in me filming much going back down that way other than walking past Trig 
so yeah thanks for watching as always stay safe out there and i'll catch you up next time